Today we're talking to Alma Valencia, who cares for her mom, who lives with frontotemporal dementia. My name is Alma Valencia. Um, my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's um, in 2017. But then we figured out that she actually has FTD, frontal temporal dementia. So mom um, was living with my aunt for four years and I helped care for her part time and I was working full time. And then I switched over. Well, mom moved in with us three years ago during the pandemic or a little bit before the pandemic. And she's been with us ever since. But she moved in here with my family. Um, it's my husband, my little girl who's now 11 and my son who's 24. So I have a multi-generational household with my little one in middle school, my son in college, and then, you know, my husband working and I have, um, I'm fortunate enough to work at home through IHSS in home supportive services mom qualifies for that but essentially in in having her qualify for that i had to strip her of everything so we're just like at bare minimum here so so yeah that's a little bit about us um yeah you have you have a full house i have a full house yeah and so yeah. i i try to be as creative and as resourceful as possible so my background is in fashion design. That was my career. Um, I have I had experience with caregiving with my grandmother and my aunt who had Alzheimer's, but at a distance, you know. And I always felt like I wanted to do something more. Like I always kind of felt like I had this lingering feeling that the responsibility would fall on me to be a caregiver eventually. And um, I resisted because of the finances. I'm like, how am I going to do it? Like, how can I care for somebody, you know? And can't that responsibility fall on somebody else that's older and that's like retired and doesn't have like their whole life ahead of them? Um, I'm not that they don't have a whole life ahead of them, but you know. Um, that they're kind of a little more settled and, and, and yeah, and because of the pandemic, it just like kind of like fell on me to just take over. So and other factors, of course, you know, but finances was always what was holding me back and it is still a struggle now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's that's a huge piece of of caregiving, you know. And sometimes it's a choice, and sometimes it's not. That you know, making it making it work. Can you talk a little bit about, um, yeah, just like the financial piece of caregiving? Like, how are you guys funding your mom's care? Um, it sounds like you took a step back from work. Like, just what you know, what's how are you guys navigating the financial piece of caring for your mom? So. Um, since I don't work full time anymore, um, I'm like, okay, where can I, where can I pull resources from? So like I mentioned, I qualify or I have her qualify for IHSS. I'm like, all right. And that whole process started really slow. I only qualified for like 40 hours and that's like $300 a month. And I'm like, how can I survive on this? So I had to go through all the steps and it took a while. And um, now I am with IHSS, you get paid minimum wage. So then I'm like, all right, that's not going to cover everything. So I started mom's page. And so I had just, I'm like, I have to grow and create awareness and just see who else is out there. Because immediately when mom was diagnosed, I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask her doctor for help. You know, doctor, you know, what resources do I have? So they would send me to like these seminars at the hospital. And I'm like, and I, all I would walk away with was like pamphlets. I'm like, okay, this isn't enough. Um, I need more. 
So I, I went over to social media, I'm like, help, you know, and I started getting in contact with other people. Um, and, and slowly but surely people have provided other creative ways to come up with some funds. Um, but still like with inflation and everything, you know, it's like, it's like you're constantly like trying to catch up. And then, and then like recently, um, my mom fell and she hurt her teeth. And I'm like, how am I going to cover her dental care? If I haven't even covered my dental care, you know, so all of those like surprise, you know, things that people don't consider. It's like, you know, where, where do you come up with the money? I think, I mean, I think that's the question that everyone, you know, you're asking it, I guess, you know, in this like real time example, your mom hurt her teeth and, and needs dental care. How, how are you, you know, affording dental care? Are you affording dental care? Well, luckily I, um, I have insurance through my, my husband. So for myself, I'm okay. I'm covered for mom. I am going to have to pull, um, I'm at, I'm going to have to go to either UCLA to like a student dental, um, facility and see if they can help. I'm going to pull from Medicaid and well, here in California, it's Medi-Cal and see how they can help. And it's just like doing my research, like really digging and seeing how I can get the support to help mom. I may not be able to provide her with everything that she needs, but at least end up where her her um, dental hygiene is is um or she doesn't have an infection or anything like that, and it's just pretty. I just have to cover the basics so that she's comfortable and she's not in any pain. You know, if she's missing teeth, she's gonna have to miss some teeth. You know, because already twice she's fallen and she's like broken both of her caps so i'm like all right i need to get I need to get, get creative and figure out what she really needs so that she can be able to chew and just like maintenance mm -hmm. yeah i mean you mentioned it before but i love how resourceful you are you know looking for uh you know less expensive ways to do things or subsidies or or you know figuring out how to make it work mm -hmm. um I know you, you know, you've qualified for HSS and can you talk a little bit about that process? Like what, how did you get started? What's the process like to applying and qualify, et cetera? Someone that doesn't know anything about it, you know, what was sort of step one? So I know a few people that qualified for IHSS and they were telling me, oh, you're never going to qualify. I'm like, okay, well, don't tell me never. <laughs> One thing about me, let's keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. I'm like, um, so I, I went to, to the offices and I, I researched and I got the application done. Um, and as I mentioned, initially they only gave me a few hours because they're like, well, considering your mom's condition, she really doesn't need, you know, a lot of hours you know she's still like very mobile she's still she can still talk when she when i first signed her up for it she was very very chatty and she was you couldn't even tell that she had dementia um and i'm like no she really needs it and of course to try to convince them I'm like okay all right i will go through the motions i will jump through the hoops and get her what she needs um and the whole process took me about two years to get done and and um because of the pandemic and i explained to them like okay this is my situation um i care for my mom completely from showers to feeding um constant supervision 24 7. um she is an, an exit seeker she cannot be left alone. So once they saw all of that or they I listed all of that, then they're like, okay, then we need a doctor's note. We need everything to back that up. Medication, all of that. And I just laid it all out for them. 
And then they were able to give me more hours and give me the support that I needed. But not until then, I like had to go through all the steps and it still took a good six months. So a lot of people get discouraged when they they start applying for IHSS because they're like, oh, this is impossible. But there is there is a method to the madness that there is, I mean, and there are different things, different stages that you have to go through. And because I wasn't, you know, we were in a pandemic, um, I had the time. We were here. So I'm like, okay, I will do all the paperwork and do everything that I need to to get things going. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like persistence was key in making that happen. Um, is there anything, you know, of course, well, so I have the benefit of the pandemic. That's not entirely accurate, but you had the benefit of time, I guess. But is there anything you would have done uh, differently now that you've been through the process? You know, if you could start over, is there anything you would have done to that might have made it go faster or more seamlessly? Um, No, no, it just takes time. It takes time. And as you mentioned, persistence, you just have to keep going um, and keep just going through, jumping through all the hoops that they have you go through because um, the resources are there, but it is, it, it is difficult, you know, and, um, and I had to move some finances around for her so that she could qualify. Um, So that helped me because I'm like, ultimately, if I'm not going to be able to work and I have to take care of her, I have to get creative and figure out what is best for mom. And then and then take it a step further and be like, okay, now I have to get creative and figure out what is sustainable for the rest of my family. You know, because my little girl's in middle school. She has needs. My son is in college. I have parent loans to take care of. So all of that, you know, I'm, I'm like I have to like look at the big picture. And then for myself, too, I still have to take care of myself and my needs, my medical needs, my mental health needs, you know, to like step away. I may not be able to get a vacation anytime soon, but at least moments where I can like step away from the caregiving process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that that's so important. We hear it all the time, right? Like you, you have to take care of you first in order to give good care to your mom, to your family, you know, to yeah. everyone around you. Um, you mentioned that you you had to move some of your mom's money around in order to qualify for IHSS. Um, are you comfortable talking about just like what that means? What did you what did you do? How did you move it? What were the you know qualification requirements? Well, um, I had to sell my mom's house, so so she she doesn't own anything at all. Um, she has no assets. She has no car. She has, you know, no bills. <laughs> that was one thing that I'm like, mom, you have what she was still able to understand. And before her aphasia and her her dementia progressed, I would always tell her, mom, you don't have any bills to worry about. You're like debt free, you know. So I always wanted her to have that peace of mind. And so she doesn't have to worry about it. However, she doesn't have any assets to her name. So so that's why she was able to qualify for um, state aid. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of people come, you know, come across that challenge where they have, um, if they have a home or if they have, um, what should we call it? Can't think of the word. Um, well, if they have other assets, if it does become an issue and, and all it takes is like just creativity of like maybe somebody like taking on those responsibilities or moving, moving, um, the funds to somebody else's name where the person can become a conservator. I am my mom's, um, I am my mom's conservator. So I took over all of that. So um yeah i mean you've done you've done 
so much legwork to make this possible for you and your family. Um, since you've been caring for your mom full time, um, you know, what's been like the most rewarding and what's been the most challenging part of being a full time caregiver? Um, let's go with the good stuff. <laughs> the most rewarding um, time with my family. Um, I, the, the time that I have, you know, to pick up my little one from school, to hang out and have coffee with my son, that's priceless. Um, oh, all right. Now the bad stuff. <laughs> the send down eat challenges with my mom, um, and just trying to navigate the dementia and everything that it entails. Um, it just, it just takes a certain person and just the patience to go through it. And I pray every day that I am, I mean, I, I, I consider myself a very, a very patient person and I endure a lot, but, um, but yeah, it's very tiring. It is very tiring. And, um, but again, I, I am constantly like chasing silver linings and looking at the good and like all the time that I am, I have to be here at home to cook to be here for my family in case of any emergency, I'm the one that they call and, and I'm able to be there for other family members, you know, in case they need me. And so that is very rewarding to me because I'm able to help and I'm able to constantly give back. So that's a way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, you obviously are a silver linings kind of person. Um, you know what you are experiencing with your mom is really challenging and to be able to see the the glass half full or the silver lining in that is really important um have you always been that way or is that like a mindset shift that's come in the past couple of years and um, by way of you know positive thinking definitely it has become that way just to changing the mindset um before i was so like career driven and very focused on um you know going up the corporate ladder um that i i always deep dive into whatever i'm doing you know so now i've just shifted my mindset of like okay that was me back then and now i just really have to focus on the positive and and at the end of the day that's all that really matters you know, so, so yeah, there has been the switch, you know, where I'm like, I am going to completely take over this caregiving role and just, you know, and just give back to my family and give back to the community as much as I can and help out whoever needs help, you know, because there's a lot of us, there's so many of us. And, and I, and as I mentioned before, I'm like, I knew that it would, it would fall on me. It would, it would come back to me in some way. You know, I, I reached, I've had recent conversations with former, um, former coworkers where they would tell me, they told me, they're like, you know, you had mentioned this before that you were, you would end up taking care of your family, but you hesitated. And I'm like, yeah, I, I was scared. I didn't know how to like, how to go for and you know, but at the end of the day, I mean, you just have to, you just have to do it, you know, and you just have to jump in and, you know, take care of your loved ones as best as you can and just constantly be resourceful, constantly, right. like, look for new ways, you know, and there are other trailblazers that have gone down that path that you have to reach out to and be like, okay, how did you do it? You know, there are so many people that have already gone down this journey you know and just constantly reach out to them you know where we're not alone none of us are alone in this and we don't have to be alone we don't have to suffer in silence mm -hmm. yeah i think that's a good reminder i think sometimes caregiving can feel really lonely but to your point there's a huge community of people i mean especially on social um who are sharing their experience and expertise and and just like you know a listening ear which i think is really special community 
um I guess now that you've like jumped in, well, not now, it's been a while, but you know, now that you've jumped in, you know, two feet, you're all the way in caregiving, how has this experience, you know, impacted or affected your thoughts of spending and saving um, and just thoughts of the future, you know, for you and your family financially? Uh, Well, I feel like, you know, mom's dementia is going to be here mom's gonna be here for a while mom is still very young and very very active um so i'm like all right i need to either create a business or or um yeah create a business and just figure out like how we can make this even more positive and just grow from this because dementia runs in our family um, I, my grandmother had Alzheimer's, my grand, my aunt had Alzheimer's, an uncle has Parkinson's. There were 12 siblings in my mom's family. So it runs in the family. So I'm like, all right, so nobody wants to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this and we are going to build something out of this, you know, and, and create, you know, something that will help all of us and hopefully financially, you know where we can we can maybe it'll start with us my little family and it'll grow with my extended family my cousins or like you know close friends and stuff and we can just create something especially in the latino family in the latino community which is which dementia is like you know we don't speak of it you know and i'm sure in other cultures as well but it's very very prevalent in our culture that we just like we just just you know hide everything conceal like don't show it and I think we need to correct that because they are still they are still our our loved ones and we they are still part of the family so we just have to like create some kind of inclusion and still create like this this like fortress you know of just like helping one another you know and make us stronger so those are my future plans yeah i mean i like you just mentioned you know it's, you, we don't talk about it like it's there's a obviously you have a huge family you know but sort of unspoken has that changed in the past couple of years like are you guys more open about talking about dementia or cognitive decline or health in general you know or is it still kind of like hush hush uh, just major, keep it in your house. <laughs> major hush hush. Nobody talks about it. Um, luckily, I mean not luckily. Um, with the announcement of Bruce Willis, now they're like, oh, and I I made the the connection. I'm like, you know what Bruce Willis is dealing with? That's what we're dealing with. They're like, oh, so they're curious, but they still don't want to talk about, it, you know. So, or they're just like, well, you know, we're just going to have to care give. And that's just, you know, what we have to do. I'm like, all right, yes, we, it's going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So I'm like, let's just plan for it. You know, let's, let's figure out what, how we can financially support one another, you know, um, whether we create, like, we create a pot or something of money or just like, create some source of fund um i just haven't figured that out yet (laughs) yeah have you i what you just said you haven't figured it out but i guess you know have you in your years thinking about this have you thought about like tools or you know anything that could make it easier then you know it's hard to sit down with family and say like okay let's talk about hard stuff but you know are there ways that you thought about that might help facilitate making this easier amongst family maybe the answer is no you just said you're not sure but you know i'm just curious what what's been floating around in your brain um the conversations that i've had with my family is more prevention um because they ask like how did your mom get it how can we prevent it so that's that's pretty much where the conversation just like like dies there 
you know, I can't quite get past that. Like, all right, so when when it happens, what are we going to do? Um, I think it's just too hard for them to like comprehend. So, yeah, yeah, it's that's a lot. Hard. That's a lot for you to shoulder. You know, to be caring for your mom and have your family not really understand it, or you know, like feeling uncomfortable talking about it. That's a lot for you to to carry. You know, in your mm-hmm. four walls with just your immediate family. Yeah. Um, I guess you know you're several years into caregiving. What do you what do you know now that you wish you knew at the beginning? Um, what I know now, I think for for us, forgiveness just forget like letting go of what what happened with with mom or like a few years before like before her diagnosis it was just so crazy like there was just so much going on like every day it was like you didn't know what, like what was going to come around the corner um so i just wish that we would have like forgiven ourselves instead of like spent so much time with back and forth i wish we would just like gotten straight to the like all right something's wrong let's fix it instead of like oh something's wrong let's just ignore it you know and it just like continue and continue and continue if i could go back i would just like have addressed it sooner not that it would have like changed my my mom's situation too much because it was already bound to happen but it would have, I would have cross, I would have course corrected some things. Um, and maybe even financially, like maybe not having to sell my mom's house. You know, that is one of my biggest regrets. But I had to. But yeah. Yeah, you're do- doing the best, the best you can with what you have. Um, yeah. If you, based off what you've just said, you know, if you had one, like, what's your top tip for other family caregivers? I'm sorry, you broke up, really. Oh, sorry. What was the question? Um, based off of, yeah, based off of what you just uh, shared or not, maybe it's something entirely different. What is your top tip for other family caregivers? Top tip for family, other family caregivers. Um, we, we all, all say this and it's like, and it's so true create your village create your village find your people um because that is the only way that you can keep going um i always check in on on social media i have certain friends that you know i always tap into and just constantly we just constantly motivate each other and and just keep going but i just wish that we could just like continue to share this like extend this love with everybody else because it's such a beautiful community you know and we all like really and even like when one of us is having a really bad day like we just all support each other so so beautifully and so i wish i had that years ago you know i've only i've recently had it like in the past two years um i wish i would have had it like you know, when mom was first diagnosed because I was kind of writing solo. <laughs> yeah. What a difference that would have made to have, you know, more support when you, especially at the beginning when you're like, what do I do? So yeah. Um, if, if people are looking for you and want to follow along you and your mom's story and your family's story online, where can they find you? At mom has dementia on Instagram or on TikTok. Awesome. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll be sure to tag you so people can find you. Um, and Alma, thank you so much for you know your time and sharing about your family's story and and what it's been like for you um, over the past couple of years. Oh well, thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, I really appreciate it.